All right, this is the freezing point depression lab where we're going to try to determine the molar mass of antifreeze. I've got a couple of antifreeze solutions mixed up here. One is 10% antifreeze. That was made by dissolving 10 grams of antifreeze in 90 grams of water. And then I have a 20% antifreeze solution, which is made by dissolving 20 grams of antifreeze in 80 grams of water. Uh, we're going to look at the freezing point of these two solutions and compare them to the freezing point of pure water and use that information to determine the molar mass of antifreeze. Our setup here, we have an ice bath, so this is uh, ice in an insulated container, and then I've added some salt to it, rock salt like you'd use for making ice cream in an old-fashioned ice cream maker. Uh, the salt is going to lower the freezing point of the water in the ice. As the ice melts, it's going to absorb heat from the surroundings and get extremely cold. So this is an ice bath that uh, will be very cold, probably around negative 15 degrees Celsius. It will be cold enough to freeze our antifreeze solution. So I'll just stir that up a little bit and we have a nice cold ice bath. Uh, to start out with, we're going to take our sample of water. So this test tube cont contains some distilled water. We want to find the freezing point of just plain distilled water. So we'll take a digital thermometer, put it in the test tube, We'll put the test tube into our ice bath. The ice bath contains salt. And you can see the temperature dropping pretty rapidly now that it's in the ice bath. And I'm going to continue to stir this. And we're going to watch the temperature drop. And we're going to try to record the temperature when the water starts to freeze. All right, so it's dropping pretty rapidly. We're at zero. So it's actually dropped beyond the freezing point of water. We'd expect water to freeze at uh, zero degrees Celsius. It's actually dropping quite a bit below that. This is called super cooling. And we see it's coming back up. And this is as the freezing is occurring. It came back up and it looks like we have a freezing point of negative 0.3 degrees. And if you can see on the graph here, it dropped down a little below the freezing point of water and then came back up and it's now freezing at a temperature of negative 0.3 degrees Celsius. So that's the freezing point of our pure water. A little lower than what we would expect, but we're going to use that data anyways, and uh, we'll see how much the uh, freezing point of the antifreeze solution differs from that. So now I'm going to take my 10% antifreeze solution. This was made by dissolving uh, 10 grams of antifreeze in 90 grams of water. And I'll put this one into the ice bath. We're going to see at what temperature this one freezes. We'll expect this one to freeze at a lower temperature than the pure water because it's a solution. And we know, based on freezing point depression, that solutions are always going to freeze at lower temperatures than the pure solute. So the solute here, uh, sorry, the, than the solvent. The solvent here is water. And then we have uh, the solute antifreeze dissolved inside of it. So we're down to negative 2 degrees Celsius, still dropping, still dropping pretty rapidly. We have a nice cold ice bath. It's going to cause us to freeze pretty rapidly. We're at negative 4, negative 5. Let me take a look at it, see if no, no crystals of ice have formed yet. So we're not quite to the freezing point yet. Still dropping in temperature. Oh, and now it just came up. And so when it comes up and kind of stabilizes, that's when the ice is forming. So negative 4.1, negative 4.2, either one of those, negative 4.1 or negative 4.2 is when the ice began to form. Okay, so we saw super cooling, and then we saw the temperature drop back off and level off as the antifreeze solution was changing from a liquid to a solid. All right, one more solution to go. We're going to 20% antifreeze solution. We're going to expect this one to have the lowest freezing point. We'll drop this one into our ice bath. We'll stir it around. We're letting it cool. This one was made by dissolving 20 grams of antifreeze in 80 grams of water. And then, of course, we just took a small sample of it. We didn't want to freeze the full 100 grams of solution. We're just freezing a small sample of it. So we've got the thermometer in the antifreeze solution. We've got the antifreeze solution in our ice bath that's been uh, covered in salt. 
to bring the uh, bring the temperature down even lower than if it were just a plain ice bath. So this one's probably going to freeze at a temperature lower than our 10% antifreeze solution. Remember that one froze at negative 4.2 degrees Celsius. ice bath. We peek in, see if any ice crystals are forming yet. Oh, and we see ice crystals are forming right here. It's not forming a full block of ice, but it is starting to freeze at, let's see, where did it level off? Negative 8.5 degrees Celsius. Looks like the freezing point of this antifreeze solution. Negative 8.5 or negative 8.6 looks like the freezing point. Now that it's frozen, it will continue to drop in temperature. Uh, that's the data you need to calculate the molar mass of antifreeze.